Welcome to Just Men, a life-changing program that resonates hope as well as encouragement. The program that gives you information and inspiration for the glory of God. I'm your host, Jeff Tate, and thank you for joining Just Men. On today's program, we have a very special guest. This is his first time being on Just Men. Please welcome Gage Cross. Brother Gage, welcome to Just Men. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it so much. It's a blessing to be here. Man, I tell you what, we're going to dive into your life. There's a lot to share. There is a lot to share. Yeah, yes. so before we kind of hit and start turning the pages of the life, just share a little bit about who is Gage Cross. Well, I was adopted at three days old by Roger and Delilah Cross. And I consider that a blessing itself. My journey has been long, and it's not over. There's a lot to share about my journey so far. I've come a long way. I'm thankful that the Lord has blessed me with many blessings that I am so excited to share with you here tonight. Mm -hmm. And Gage Cross is a God-fearing man who loves God above all things. Gage Cross goes out of his way to help others. Gage Cross is someone you can call a friend. And he's someone that you can always lean on. Mm. Let's begin to take a step back in the development of yourself in terms of how you was groomed into a man who loves God. Because many times we don't start there. You know, sometimes That's correct, yes. some challenges and adversities and some development of the, the purging process. So let's take me back to your adolescence or childhood. What was that like for you and growing up and what did you see model before you to, to maybe give you a glimpse of some greatness that's on the inside of you? Where it all started? You know, growing up in a household, my mother was Catholic and my father was Church of Christ. And they gave me the decision to choose where to attend church. And that's who they were. They didn't force me to go here or go there. They gave me the option to search. They gave me the option to find where I was most comfortable. I'd say it wasn't until I lost my father when I was 10 years old that I began to lean on Christ and to find the importance of Christ, our God. I had to grow up at a young age. And growing up at the age of 10 is something that many people don't get to experience. My mother passed away when I was 20 years old. And now I became more strong with Christ. I began to really study more. I began to learn more. But he, he was always there. He was always there. It, it just time, time evolved. And I searched out. You know, I just searched. And the, as I got older, the closer I have become with with Christ, my God. Mm. And I cannot explain the love that he gives to each and every one of us. I cannot explain the blessings that he gives to each and every one of us. But back to your question, I think it's, it's time has, as time has evolved, I have become closer to God. Yeah. Talk about what has been one of the testing of your faith um, in this growth, in this walk with God, starting with your adolescence, even into today's time? What has been the most testing? Testing and trying time 
that really caused you actually to even grow in God, but it was through the furnace of fire. And many times when we know that God, when he purges, uh, sometimes we're going through a process that we don't become awakening. It's kind of like Paul or Saul right. on the road to Damascus. He had to go through an experience in order to put him on a street called straight. So share a little bit about that pathway of growth to where you experience pain or suffering, and yet still you knew he was there. Talk a little bit about that and how you okay. grew from that process. You know, I'd say, you know, feeling alone is where the, the true testing came, came in. Mm. You know, when you lose both parents, you feel as if you're alone. But in honesty, you're not. You're not alone because you have, you know, God's there. He's there every minute of the day, every second of the day. He's there. I became to realize that he's always there. And when, whenever you don't have that support system of a mother or father, it's hard because you're trying to figure out what you're going to do next. And I knew that the only thing I had to do was go forward mm -hmm. and go forward with God. Because God has led me to where I am today. God has showed me what I need to do. And God, he makes sure that we don't go without. If you're full on the word, you will never go hungry. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, uh, the, the true test is it's just feeling alone and you're in this big old world. You're paying for bills and you're paying for things that you never had to do before. You're making payments on insurance. You're 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 having to pay for your own food now for groceries, and your your whatever breaks down or whatever breaks, you're having to repair it yourself. That's where the true testing came in, is to find myself with Him, to, and that's what I'm what I, that's what I'm aiming at is to that I had to realize that everything through Him is possible. Let Him take control. Let Him do the work for you. And that's what I've come to learn is everything's already in his hands. Mm. Everything's already in his hands. It's already done. And I've come to learn that because it's true. It's already done. You know, just if I need help with a certain bill, I need help with something that's going on in my house. If I need extra hands, help me with something like if I need repair on the house, he knows that. You know, I, I need that because mm -hmm. I don't even have to ask him. And that's what, you know, the good book says. He already knows our problems before we bring it up to him. And that's what I've come to learn through the struggles is let everything and give everything to him. Wow, that's beautiful. So how did you, where did you see that model? Where did you get that from? Is that something that was innate? Or how did you learn to trust God at that level and to lean on him? Uh, especially in your developmental years. I mean, losing your parents and having that sense of abandonment. Uh, where does God comes off the pages? I call it God coming off the pages of the book. Right. And sitting down with you and you're seeing the word made flesh. You're seeing it modeled before you. You're seeing uh, a touch or someone coming in your life and being a, an example of Christ's love, the tangible love that many times people don't experience talk a little bit about those people who, who were in your life that helped you to people in my life who has helped me yeah to, to find christ and to know, and to love christ well i want to start off with my mother you know i love her very much she meant the world to me everything was always about her until she had a car accident in 2014. She went to church and she got saved. And I've seen that transition take place where everything was about Christ. Mm -hmm. She got saved, you know, and everything was about Christ. She did the whole 360. Mm -hmm. And it was so wonderful to see that lady love Christ and put Christ first. And that's what I find so amazing. 
is she, had, she found him after all these years. And so everything was about Christ when she got saved. And I knew that's the importance of being saved. You have to feel it. And she felt it. And that was a big influence on me. My grandmother, which is her mother, growing up she always taught me about the Bible. She always told me scriptures. She taught me the Lord's Prayer. She always made sure that I knew who Christ was. She meant a lot to me. She still does. She's no longer with us also. She taught me about what he does and what he'll do for you. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank her enough. I know she's listening here tonight. And I can't thank her enough for being the role model that she was because my grandmother was a God-fearing woman also. And most importantly, a, a very loving of God person. Um, Miss Tracy Fan is someone who means a lot to me. She shares that same passion about Christ. You can see the glow in her eyes when she talks about Christ, how much he truly means to her. She's another person that means a lot to me. And we have talked about God and Christ over the whole year, over the years. And to see the love that they pay towards him, that's what inspires me, you know, along this journey, is just seeing the love that everyone gives to Christ. My pastor, he has shown me how what God can truly do for you. He has shown me the blessings that the Lord can do for you. You know, I have Joe Harrington. Joe is a friend of mine for many years. He was my father's best friend. He's an, he's an ordained minister. And his love for God has given me hope and courage. Mm. And many other friends that I have that loves Christ, they give me the, the courage also. You know, I have been thankful, referring to your question, I have been thankful to be surrounded by people my entire life, who knows Christ and who loves him. That is what I'm so thankful for. I'm very thankful that I have been surrounded by people who love Christ. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, I would say this is the first time that I've had uh, someone like yourself to be on our show. And throughout the whole show, I don't know what it is, brother, but you have brought an orchestra of birds. I'm hearing birds singing Thank and you. singing and singing. I and I, we've never had that before. Uh, it lets you know uh, when you spoke of your mother, when you spoke of those who have went on to glory, the birds got louder and louder. Uh, it's a reminder that they've been with you. It's a reminder that they're here. They showed up with you. I mean, you had an orchestra oh, yeah. that's playing for you. And I know Isaiah... He's seen an orchestra, the word says, when he was on tough times and he's seen God high and lifted up and his train had filled the temple, is what the word says uh, in Isaiah 6. And the angels were round about him saying, holy, holy, right. holy yes. is the Lord of hosts. For the whole earth is filled with your glory, filled with your glory. And I, and I, I just had to pause and recognize, man, I've never heard the angels and the birds singing in the studio uh, the way it's been singing. And, and I believe it's more than just the physical birds, but there is a spirit dove, the Holy Spirit, laying upon you and anointing you for a time such as this. And, uh, man, we are so grateful and thankful for your presence. Thank you so much. And uh, now blessing. talk to me about what, what's burning in your heart about God and what God is speaking to you. Uh, now in terms of the words. You came in, you were fully armored. You had your cross on, you had your word oh, yeah. in your hand. It's like you had the full armor on God. What What is it that God is calling you to? And what is God is speaking in your heart about uh, about men and about relationships and about those who feel abandoned? Talk to me about uh, that which God has placed on your heart. To spread his word. Mm -hmm. I There was a period in, in my life where I didn't attend church for a while. I had a friend 
give me a call last September. Mm -hmm. His grandfather passed away. And he uh, called me up on the phone and he said, hey, Gage, I have a question. I said, go ahead with your question. He said, I feel like I have to go to church. I said, okay. I said, um, where would you like to go? He said, wherever you can find one, I'll go with you. So in my head, I was thinking, Brother Joe Harrington, what I just spoke about you, spoke about him a minute ago. I said, well, Joe preaches at this New Bethel church in town where I live. I said, we'll try that out. He said, sounds good. And ever since then, I, I'm still going every Sunday. I'm still there every Sunday. It's amazing. I felt that the, the, that the Lord used my good friend mm. to tell me to go back to church. Mm. And let me tell you, life has changed since going back to church. It's amazing. I cannot ex explain it. I cannot put it into words how truly amazing the, the feeling is. I'm able to help. We help so many people. We have a food ministry, of the largest in the county there. And every Thursday, first Thursday of the month, I'm there helping, packing all these food to all the individuals that come picks up the food. And what's amazing is those individuals who come get food, I see the face of the Lord on each and every one of them. Mm. And I've learned that over the years. Those who I help and those who are in need of help I see the face of the Lord. And that's one of the most, one of the most best feelings in the world mm -hmm. is, seeing that, is seeing the face of my Savior on people who I'm helping because he knows what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And so going back to what I was talking about, going to church, it's, it's been amazing being back into church. And so what I feel what God has truly spoken to me in these last few months is spread my word, and I have been. I have some young friends that we do Bible study on every other Saturday night, and we, you know, we talk about the Bible. I've had Bible study with my good friend Tracy and Keith and, her, and their family, which they're my family. We do Bible study there together, and I just feel as if he has truly told me, spread my word. Mm -hmm. And like I told you earlier, if you're full on the word, you will never go hungry. Mm -hmm. And you were just talking about the birds. They don't worry because they're taken care of. And that's what's amazing. He speaks in the good book about the birds are taken care of, the animals are taken care of, because they know they have a loving God. Mm. So why should we fear? Why do we worry? I've learned that Satan is the one that wants us to worry. Satan is the one that wants us to feel hurt. Satan is the one that wants us to complain. These last few months, I've learned that. And my pastor, my pastor he has this saying, by your stripes I'm healed. Mm. He says, say that every morning. I have been, and ever since then, my life has transitioned into a much, much fulfilled life. Mm. It's, it's amazing, which I got baptized on March 3rd, which is my grandmother's birthday. Mm. I was sitting at home, and there was a voice that came in my head on March 3rd. I said, what are you telling me? And he told me to be ba get baptized on March 3rd. I looked at my calendar, and March 3rd fell on a Sunday. Mm. I contacted my pastor. And he said, we'll get it done. He says, I don't hear much people getting baptized in the cold of March, mm. where it's cold weather. And he said, but it's not going to stop me. So time approached. March 3rd came up, and it was supposed to be snowing that day. And I was worried that we weren't going to be able to have that baptism I contacted him. He said, I've got something in mind. You know, I have something already planned. And so as I got to church, he said, we're going to go to Portland, Portland, Tennessee, for the baptism. And we traveled to, to Portland after the service. It's a beautiful little church. I can see it now, just how it looked walking inside. A beautiful altar, beautiful baptism tank up in the uh behind the altar and uh, i requested brother joe to read where john baptized jesus before my baptism we got ready to, for the baptism as i went under and i came back up 
All I could see was pure white. That's all I could see. I felt the presence of the Lord. I felt the presence of my mother, my father, my grandmother. I felt them all there. And it's the most wonderful feeling I've ever felt. And ever since then, Jeff, I'm telling you the honest truth. The spirit of lust, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of gluttony, slothness, all that has left, mm. it's gone. Mm. It's all gone. The, the, the evil spirit of lies, the evil spirit of talking about people, you know, it's all gone. And, you know, it's all gone. And I'm so thankful. That is the power of our Lord. That is the power what he bestows upon me. If you truly feel him and you truly accept him, you'll feel those spirits gone. I've been reborn and I'm ready to spread his word. I'm glad I'm here tonight. It's a blessing I'm here tonight because I'm, I'm, I get to spread his word. And that's what I find a blessing is being here tonight. So he's led me here tonight and that's a blessing itself. Mm. It truly is. Wow. I tell you, you've blessed us. I know the word talks about in Colossians to set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. For you are, you're a hid in Christ. And when Christ, which is your life, when he appeared, you appear also in glory. So he sanctified you. He, he purged you. He knew you when you was in your mother's womb is what he, what he says and speaks there to us. And it's amazing, like what you're sharing about this, this, transformation uh to where the old man passed away and yeah, behold the gone. new man comes forward yes uh, in christ it is his life that is being lived through us and and so one of the things that you talked about that many people are challenged with or suffering with is the flesh the things that have yes. held them and shackled yes. them whether it is you know pornography or whether it Correct. is drug addiction and right. all the things yes. that enslave you uh, even people addiction, sometimes that can be your high because you're always constantly seeking approval Correct. from people and not accepting the approval of Christ himself who purchased Correct. you and yes. bought you and brought you into a marvelous life. So I like what the word says. The word says that, that he has, he has uh, not only has he defeated all the works of the enemy, but he's brought us into the kingdom of his dear son in Colossians 1, and he's brought us into a marvelous life that we no longer are our own, we are his. We don't belong to ourselves. And so when you begin to understand that transformation, that's Correct. the power. Yes. That's the power. The power is in who you are in him. And uh, I, I thank God that you're sharing about his word and speaking his word. And so in the, in, in, when you begin to close in terms, you said my life has been through a lot of things oh, in yeah. terms of that. Yes. What resonate most that you can say that just for God has really showed up in my life. What what are you seeing as a true testament of God's full witness in your life uh, when you are encountering people? What do you see? Wow. Um, the blessing that's around me. Everything's a blessing. I wake up. That's mm -hmm. a blessing. <laughs> I put those feet on the ground. That's a blessing. I always say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Every morning I get up. You know, it, it's it's amazing just serving him. It's it's something I encourage to everyone. And what you were saying is, there's so many people has that, that those addictions, and that's what I'm hoping that I can spread that word is if you get full on his word, mm. you can beat those addictions, whether it be drug related, like you said, pornography, drinking whether it's talking about people or just being jealous or just not being a good person. That can change around for everyone. Mm. And your question was again? Is how have you seen it mostly affected in the people around you, this change that's happening inside of you? How has it impacted the people around you? How it's impacted everyone around me with the change that's happened to me. Inside of you. That, that's what I thought you had said. Um, like the young people that I, I, I talk to at Bible study. Mm. You know, they, they say there has been a change in me. Mm. And they're thankful. My good friend who came up from Florida a week, week or so ago. 
when he left, he said, Gage, you've changed. And he said, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And before he left, I said, for once, I'm not happy when someone's actually leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> usually, I'm, I, I'm usually I'm excited that someone's leaving my house. I'm like, good riddance and thank you, <laughs> you know. But uh, I was actually, for once, I told him, I said, I said for once, I'm, I'm not happy that someone's leaving, you know. I'm trying to rub off on people, give them the word, give them God, and they and they truly enjoy it, you know. They want that word of encouragement. They want that word of enlightenment, and that's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I have truly seen the transition of people around me, you know. They like There's some that enjoy being around me more because I'm not as mean as they say, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Because I can get my old self, I could get um, impatient. I could get angry. Mm. I could get sad quickly. And now I'm just trying to enjoy everyone's time. Wow. Because we all don't have that much time together. Mm. What's truly important is that we all must decide what to do with the time that's given to us. And I just want to encourage everyone to seek Him. Once you seek Him, and once you realize that He's everything, your life will change. Yeah. You know, the Word says in John 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. And He says that just like the branch that cannot bear fruit apart from the vine, so can we not bear fruit apart from Him. So He says, abide in me, and I abide in you. And you will bring forth what is the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness and faith and humility and temperance. You'll bring all the fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because you're connected to the vine. Amen. Because you're attached to the Amen. vine. And so that's what you've been And I'm producing of. good fruit. And you're producing yes. good fruit. Yes. Because of who you attach to. Yes. You know, who you attach to. We should be able to know. The word says, I'll know them by their fruit. Absolutely. And so if you're not attached to the vine, then you're not going to bring forth the fruit of love and joy and peace. Absolutely. Last word of encouragement. Before I go, I want to thank everyone that's helped me on this journey. They all know who they are. I'm so thankful and I couldn't do it without them. There's so many people. I don't want them feeling left out. Earlier you was talking about there's some that has inspired me. You know, I sit here and I don't want to leave anyone out. But as I sit here, I want them to know that I love each and every one of them. And they all mean so much to me. They know who they are. And I couldn't do it without them. But most of all, I couldn't do it without the Lord. And I want all of them to remember that also.